Hi there and welcome to Kitchen Counter Crafts. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. All right, so today I'm really excited to show you the Thompson Chain Reference Bible. And this is now my go-to Bible. And I will tell you, I got it a few months ago, I think in springtime. And the ESV is not being made right now. They are back ordered out of stock at Kirkbride. They're having some issues with COVID. And so it's delayed shipment and delayed all kinds of stuff. So um, just in case you get this from like another book place or like a used bookstore or something like that, here's the box information. It's 109 ESV burgundy bonded leather thumb indexed. The box doesn't really tell you much about anything other than what it is like the Thompson Chain Reference Bible is known for. And so it has alphabetical index, Bible readings. I'm going to talk about all of these things that are covered in the on the box. Harmonies, illustrated studies, concordance, Bible maps, things like that. On the back, it does not give you much information on the font and things like that. So I did some research for you to help you figure out what is included in this. And so this just tells you like text samples from the KJV, NIV, NKJV, but this one is my ESV, which I'm so excited about. And the reason why I'm excited, and by the way, that's Kirkbride Company. The reason why I'm excited about that is, oh yeah, and this is just a like a clamshell box. Uh, it's because I do my Bible memorization in ESV, and I read a long time ago that one of the things you want, want to do is to keep your versions the same so that when you are looking at different Bibles that you are able to then compare them and have have just be memorizing the same stuff. So I wanted the Thompson chain to be in ESV because I use it to prepare for my women's Bible studies and things like that. So I wanted it to have some sort of consistency. I'm going to just zoom in on this a little bit. So here are my facts on the Thompson chain, and I'm also going to have it in the specifications down below in the video. And the Thompson chain is a super interesting Bible. If you've never experienced a Thompson chain, I'm going to just kind of cover it as we go. But it was developed in 1890 by Dr. Frank C. Thompson, and he spent ages decades going through this. And I, again, I'm just excited to show you what is in here because it truly is the best way to study your Bible. And it is just a, a treasure trove of information. And it is called a Thompson chain because it has chain references. I'm going to go through those in just one minute. Um, so this is bonded leather. It is burgundy, kind of like a brownish though to me. And on the side, it has the gold stamping and it says Thompson Chain Reference Bible, ESV, red letter, and then Kirkbride for the publisher. No distinguishing marks on the back. It's it's not that flexible just because it is cheap bonded leather. It's glued down. There's no sewing. I don't know what that is. Uh, but, you know, kitchen counter crafts, you get whatever's on my kitchen counter, I guess. Uh, so glued down here um this is that part of the cover there it's still pretty substantial i think it'll, it'll last i use it to study at home so i'm not really carrying this around too much this is cardstock paper cardstock it is smith smith's own i still haven't figured out which one it is smith's own is what i'm gonna call it and there's the sewing lines so at least it is sewn down and then it says thompson chain reference bible old and new testaments and i'll show you the copyright page in one second there you have it it was uh it's using the 2016 esv here and then the trademark information and kirkbride bible company printed and published in the united states love that so there's that piece of it. This one I asked because I'm using it for Bible studying. I really asked for it to be a thumb in index. So again, that's a little bit hard to find as well. Now I'm saying hard to find. You can find all of, you can find this mainly in the KJV, 
Apparently, my KJV friends uh, use the Thompson chain reference more than anybody else does. And in fact, in my Bible study, hardly anyone's really heard of the Thompson chain. I had to explain what it was and how it is to be used. And my husband actually um, discovered this not too many years ago, especially in his in his uh, Bible studying. And so he told me that I would love it. And he was 100% correct. I also fondly call this my rabbit trail Bible. And that is because uh, I didn't really, I mean, sometimes you're reading the Bible and you open it up and there it is. You just kind of read through the passage and you're not, I don't know, you can read the study notes in the study Bible, but then you kind of get going and not, I don't know, you don't really read too much more than that. That's how I was studying before. But the Thompson chain is unlike any other Bible because it is going to tell you all kinds of different places to um, go to. So that is what the chain is. So chain reference means it's going to give you the verses from Genesis all the way to Revelation. So it's going to give you all these uh, different things that you can go to. And I'm going to show you in just a minute. Okay. So as you flip through the first few pages, it's going to give you these... Uh, this is the thing that my husband knew I would love. And it's all these drawings that are included in here. I just love them. I photocopy them off for my Bible study so that they can um, take a look at it. But look at this, the river of inspiration that flows through the Old Testament and then 400 silent years. And then the river goes into Revelation. So here's the page on Genesis. And you're going to see these chain references off to the side. So here we go in the, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So that's Genesis 1, 1 and off to the left hand side, you're going to see PP and that is a reference. Um, it's called parallel passage and that's the parallel passage. And that is going to be John 1, 3 because John 1, 3 talks about the beginning and then Hebrews 110 and then it has family Bible reading if you want to read Genesis 3 1 through 6 and then then it has all this information just for the first part of it it talks about darkness it talks about the deep it talks about light it talks about all of these things and now you can understand how you can just sit in this first basically two verses of Genesis and then have all these references that you can then go into in this amazing complex Bible. So the chain references go from Genesis to Revelation. There's also, uh, so you've got all these, it's got the, the two column. It's, um, let's see, what was I going to say? I'm like all out of sorts now. Um, it is, let me go through some of the specifics. So it is an eight point font and you have, uh, let me give you the measurements. Where'd my ruler go? There it is. See, I just jump into it because I just love it so much. Just telling ya, you, you got to get one of these and, um, it doesn't matter which one at this point in time. Okay. So this is, uh, it says six and a half, but it's more like six and three quarters, uh, if you include the yap, I, I know that they're t usually talking about the book block, which is right about, well, that's not even true. Uh, well, I guess if you push it, so it'd be about six and a half. And then it's supposed to be six and a half by nine by two. Mine is going um, six and three quarters and then nine and a half. And then let's see, the height is like right at one and three quarters, just about. So a little bit off from the publisher's uh, measurements, but I'm also including this cover. The yap is not hardly anything at all. So maybe, I don't know, one eighth of an inch, two eighths of an inch, quarter of an inch, I guess I should say. All right, uh, burgundy bonded leather. I've said that like three times now. And gilt, uh, gilted edges here. Very nice gilt on it. They they talk about like a triple layer gilt that they do. And they uh, not only put it on, but they paint it on uh, several times so that it lasts, which is very nice. 
And then the gilt lettering, the gold lettering on the sides. I already talked about no spines on the side. It's not no raised uh, spines here. And then published in 2016 by Kirkbride. Oh, the ribbon. There's only one ribbon here, and it is a double-sided silk ribbon, apparently. It does not feel like silk to me. It feels pretty, pretty flimsy. And you're probably wondering then, Mona, what are these other ribbons that are hanging out? Well, I'm going to show you because one of the things that I do is I've been putting my own ribbons into Bibles, and I'll do a video on how to do that. But in the meantime, here's what I do. I have this little, I sew. And so I just took a scrap piece of fabric, glued some ribbons onto that, four to be exact, and then just tuck that into my Bible so that I have extra ribbons. But it is annoying that there's only one ribbon, especially you're gonna be using this thing to study. So that's a problem. Um, let's see, thumb indexed, uh, Smith's own red letter. Let me show you the red letters. Whoa, went way too far. There we go. Red letters, let's go in on that. The red is, I I know it says red letters, but it's kind of a pinkish. I know that's being very, very petty, but it looks a lot redder in the video here than it does in person. Uh, but it is red letter, which is nice. And then the Thompson white paper, I don't know what the GSM is, but I'm gonna guess it's about a 28 GSM. It's it's fairly thin. There is quite a bit of ghosting. It is supposed to be line matched, but I'm gonna tell you, I was trying to figure that out on my own and it was hard to do that, but there it's, I don't know if it's line matched or not. I'm gonna guess that it is, but there is a lot of ghosting. Can you, can you see through that? I think, um, well, I can see, I can definitely see the other side coming through. Yeah, you can see it a little bit on here. All right, so there is ghosting. That's pretty bad. Then there's this cockling sound. I like it. My husband freaks out. It's pretty bad. I like it. Uh, I But I do paper crafting, so I like crunchy paper noises. It just adds to my... I don't, I don't know. I just like paper. So I don't mind that. He said that if that was his, he would return it, send it back. And he is very, very um, snobby, I think, when it comes to Bible. So I'm doing that just for him. Okay, so crunchy, cockling sound. It has burgundy and gold head and tail bands. Very pretty, actually. That's that's kind of the nice, nice touch. Oh, there's my my prayer ribbon. There you go. You can see it. Probably shouldn't do that. Probably should be a little bit more careful with it. All right. So that is uh, the specs. And again, I'll have them down below, but let me use my handy dandy tabs to get to the next part here. So you can see the, the uh, book heading, then the chapter heading is pretty big. Their double column with all the helps and um, stuff on the, the chain on the side. And then um, that's the pretty consistent throughout. So I'm just going to flip to the back because really that's where all the fun begins. I, I love this Bible. And it stays right here uh, in the family room. And I'm always flipping through it and taking a look at it. But this is really what I use to study. So this is the last page of Revelation, Revelation 22, 21. And that's where the fun begins. So here we have the Thompson Comprehensive Bible Helps in nine departments in all caps here. So you have a alphabetical index, and then you have numerical index of chain topics, outline studies of the Bible, Bible character studies, harmonies, illustrated studies, archaeological supplement, Hebrew calendar, concordance, and the maps. So let me go through this. So you have an alphabetical index. Okay, everybody's got an alphabetical index. That's not that big of a deal. But then you get to this numerical index of chain topics. And I think I'm going to have to do a different um, video to show you how that piece works. But basically, if you follow their directions, you should be able to um, figure out how these 
um, index indices work. So there is a page number and then you have the index number and that's where things kind of get a little complica complicated. So like, for example, this is page 1539, but on the top of this page, it says glorifying God 1423. So the chain number is different than the page number down below. And that is kind of how you have to go. So I, let's see, numerical index starts on 1423, which is a page number. Mm -hmm. I should have put a bookmark there, but you know what? I'm just going to say, oh yes, I meant to do that because I wanted you to flip there with me. Numerical index of chain topics. And then here it starts with Aaron or A.A. A. Ron, as he is known in my family. So uh, principle of Bible study. Uh, the, there's also best method to study right before that. So they give you all kinds of wonderful ways to study and that is just on how you can do it by topic you can do it by the book you can do it by the biographical sketch of the person so it also has outline studies let me flip there 1791 all right 1791 all right there we go and so look at this this is just, how amazing is this? Just wonderful. Seven editions of divine law uh, from Psalms, Romans, Exodus, John, Romans, Hebrew, and Hebrews and 2 Corinthians 3. And then it has all of these things, including the books of the Apocrypha, how the manuscripts came to be, the modern English translations, origins and growth of the English Bible. So if you're doing a class on that, it also has the temple of truth. These drawings are seriously what I live for in this. Okay, I'm not going to skip through because it's going to be a super long uh, video. Bible character studies. I do have a bookmark on that. Let me, well, how nice Mona. I finally have a bookmark on something. Oh, and I flipped too far. There we go. Uh, analysis of the Bible books is here. So this is going to give you the whole analysis if you're using it for a Bible study, which I was, especially for the book of Ephesians and in my women's Bible study. Then it has the prominent characters and the meaning of their names. The kings of Judah, we are studying. We did First Samuel and now we're in Second Samuel and women's Bible study. So all of those things you can use from the Thompson chain look at the art on these it has um all of these like footsteps also so you're gonna see these bible illustrations these are journeys of abraham then you see the tree of moses's life i know it's sideways don't don't worry about it because i want to show you these maps before this gets too long and there we go this is journey of the children of israel so wanderings in the desert this is Journeys and Life of Joshua, so where um, what he was doing, and then small little um, lovely drawings there as well. Then you have Gideon and Samuel, the judges, then Saul and where he was at. I'm sure the next one's going to be David. So it's got all these maps through, and then it has, look at this. The tree of Jesus's life. I know there's something before that too. Oh, Solomon. Okay. And then it has the key to the tree of Jesus's life and the harmony of gospels. The person, Mr. Thompson, spent decades, decades delving into the treasures of the Bible so that we can have it all in this beautiful Thompson chain. And then here's um, Journeys of Jesus. These are Jesus, more about Jesus and his footsteps. And one of the drawings even has little footsteps on it. It's so cute. And then um, Jesus in his last months, Jesus in his last days, so that you can get a real visual picture of what all this looks like. This is something I love to look at during, uh, during resurrection time, during Passover and um, the really like holy days. And this is Jesus in the hours upon the cross, like on a Good Friday weekend, it's a wonderful thing to study and look at. Post resurrection, life of Peter, more the Paul Paul's tree. 
and then um, outlines of church history, places of religious worship. There's all kinds of archaeological, look at this, like photographs and things like that. So it just has just all kinds of treasures. You can take a look. Oh, and then finally the concordance. So what you are waiting for. And then that's the rest of the book. Oh, no, it's not. Forgot about the colored maps. Colored maps are actually very, very nice. And uh, on the thicker cardstock, kind of antique-ish colors, which I personally love. And so there you have it. Beautiful, beautiful Bible. I really recommend getting it. I think it's a treasure to have. Um, and then finally, I'm going to compare it to the size of a Quintel, um, Skylar Quintel. Um, this is actually the thin one without the concordance. And this is the NASB compared to the Thompson chain. And as you can see, the Thompson is just a tad bit smaller here. It's a little bit larger or thicker in the width of it. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's another one that you'd like me to review, would you please tell me? And I hope that you found this useful and that you're going to go and run out and go get a Thompson chain because it's just a wonderful treasure to be had in any Bible collection. Until next time, bye.